he's mad! What sort of person boots this stuff up? Earlier this evening, Professor Moody placed the Triwizard Cup within the maze. Only he knows where it resides. What do you mean, only he knows where it resides? It's in the middle, right? I mean, yeah, that's not the same as knowing how to get to the middle, but still. Champions, prepare yourselves. Do they surround the crowd with the maze hedges too? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, oh, too slow, Harry. Too slow. Come on, let's, let's speed it up. The Champion's Cup isn't behind you, shitlord. Oh, jeez, what's happening? Oh, once again, we have the camera following Harry from behind, just as it should have been throughout the entire fucking game. What the fuck just hit me? Oh, there's shit coming out of the ground. Okay. It seems to come up at regular intervals, so it's simply a matter of timing your walking speed past them. Well, it turns out that this camera isn't really following me from behind after all. It just kind of floats in midair while pointing in one general direction. As usual. But that's disappointing, especially after it tricked me into thinking that it might be like the first two tasks where it follows from behind. But what about the fact that this results in more of an overhead view of the various turns and parallel pathways in this maze? Well, it certainly helps in seeing what's ahead of you and which turns might lead to a dead end if the pathway stops abruptly enough to be seen in its entirety by the camera. I don't know, I guess maybe just this once I shouldn't complain about the camera's usual behavior, given that it's actually being helpful for a change. Even if it does feel a bit hypocritical of me to just go along with it, since this time it's benefiting me now. Sure, part of me was expecting to stumble around in a green and leafy version of that Windows 95 screensaver maze, but that may not have been all that practical for various reasons. God damn it, I came all this way only to reach a dead end. What a waste of time. Actually, what would make a proper third-person viewpoint more practical without seeing over the edges of the maze is to have some kind of a spell where you drop a ball of light or something, and you would use that to mark where you've already been so you don't accidentally waste time going down the same pathway again. That would be much more useful than the Point Me spell if the Champion's Cup is indeed in the center of the maze rather than the northern edge of it. Because if we're supposed to generally be heading north, and assuming the camera wasn't semi-fixed looking in the same general direction all the time, the point me spell that Harry used in the book as a means of finding your way around would still point towards north anyways, regardless of where you are relative to the champion cup's position. But if they wanted to include something like point me, or my idea of having balls of light mark off where you've already been, they could have replaced magic as extremos here with one of those two functions, since Ron and Hermione aren't following me around to be able to use that power boost anyways. And yeah, I knew that dead end was coming up, but I also knew there was that pot of beans there. And now why I thought that was worth my time, I'm just realizing I have no idea. Well that's nice though, a hedge closed behind me so I can't go that way by accident again. And this game's point of view, I can't see what the fuck is in that dead end now, if anything. Another limitation we have here, as opposed to the camera following from behind the player, is we lose out on a chance to do certain things, like having the limbo mist that turns things upside down in the book. Now granted, the way past that particular obstacle is to keep walking through it, which doesn't present much of a challenge if the player knows what to do when encountering it, but the point is there's probably no good way to do something like that with this in-game camera now. Where did Cedric go? Oh, who cares. Gotta get those beans in the meantime, though. I have no idea what good they'll do for me this late in the game, nor do I even remember what specifically orange beans do anyways, but it's just a habit. Gotta get those beans. Gotta avoid running into the walls of leaves and twigs that are thrusting outwards at me, too. So aside from the peripheral tunnel vision we're experiencing from these pursuing vines, this is kind of what I was expecting, given that the last two tasks had the in-game camera following me like this. At least it's darker in here than it looked earlier from our bird's eye view. A 
I've already had to make a couple of turns at some earlier forks in the road. I hope I'm going the right way. Or that the game will just give me the next cutscene regardless of where I run. So long as I survive for long enough. Which, by the way, I still have full health. 100 hit points. And I forget what these spiky plants are. I think we first encountered them in the Herbology class rather than the Forbidden Forest. Or the Herbology Break-In, rather. It wasn't a class. But I'm not sure what they do other than probably hurt you if you touch them. Now, there's a ton of them that I have to dodge as I move side to side while still trying to run forwards. I hope none of these hedges push me into one of them. Jesus Christ! There's nothing around his wrist, so he's not even being restrained. Okay, do I smash his face in with one of the rocks, though? Oh, god damn it! I have to deal with two of these things again? I mean, yeah, that's a fitting obstacle to set up in a challenge like this, but I hate dealing with these now. Something about them got a lot more difficult compared with the first time I ever dealt with one of these, and I could defeat it in just a few seconds. Or rather, it seems like whenever there's two of them that I have to fight, the first one is indeed killed in mere seconds, and the second one just seems to take forever. I don't understand that inconsistency, really. And I've also noticed how the spell Inflatus seems to defeat these things rather than generic jinxes or anything else, but I have no idea how to force any of the characters to actually cast that particular spell. It just seems to happen at random. And maybe it's the case that it's not random and there is a way to cast Inflatus in particular whenever you want, but as long as I'm unable to figure it out, then it's indistinguishable from being totally random. And in the meantime, I don't know what to do other than run around and around like an idiot, constantly circling around the beast, suffering from explosive bowel movements. Idiot, come on. Damn it. Oh. See, I had a clear path for casting Jinxes into its backside for at least a few seconds, but it didn't seem to do anything. And I'm gonna have to keep doing that over and over again until eventually it works for some reason. No inflatus there. I mean, that time I might have been taking a clear shot for five seconds and it had no effect whatsoever. Oh shit, I cannot believe I didn't run out of the way in time. Cedric must think I'm an idiot. Oh shit, speaking of Cedric, it's marching right towards him. Gotta get the beans and then distract the walking prolapsed volcano. Come on. Oh fuck no, Cedric's gonna get deep fried alive. Okay, he either died instantly, or he just didn't get hurt in the first place. Uh, and I can't use this rock to plug that hole in the backside of the blast ended screwed either. Seriously? I failed to move out of the way in time again? Well, that fucker was pushing me for a couple of seconds. I could have been impaled on those spiky bushes. Yeah, Cedric's just not moving at all. He probably died. Oh, never mind. I saw him squirming. Oh, for God's sake, he's gonna get burned by the magma diarrhea all over again. What the hell good does this do for me, being able to shoot Jinxes in three directions in a situation like this? It's something else that seems to change randomly in this game, but I have no control over it. Oh, good. I moved out of the way. Oh, yes! It's shooting the right spell now! Finally! <laughs> he just fell like a ragdoll. What, just like that? Oh, seriously, not even one shield? Well, if I'm lucky, then Voldemort's level won't require any more shields either.